We have these, uh, these three equations that we use to describe or, or predict the motion of some object that's undergoing constant acceleration. Um, as, as a preliminary step here, I think it's, it's useful and you might even find it interesting to, uh, uh, to just have a good understanding of where these equations come from. Now, uh, Isaac Newton wrote these equations using, uh, using calculus and you know, so the, the way that people describe this is that Isaac Newton invented calculus so that he could solve these physics problems. Uh, we, we actually know that he wasn't the first one to develop calculus. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the story, part of the legend anyway. So, um, so Isaac Newton used calculus to, to develop these equations. Now, if you haven't had calculus, that's, that's fine. You won't get this next section, but you don't have to know how these equations were. Oops, uh, how these equations were derived in order to use them. So if you haven't had calculus yet, please just you know, go ahead and skip to um, to this time right here, um, and we'll uh, you know, we'll rejoin you at that point. Now, if you have had calculus, everybody who hasn't had calculus is gone. We alone. Okay, good. So if you have had calculus, these are actually fairly simple um, derivations that we can do uh, of these equations. So we start off with the assumption that acceleration as a function of time is, uh, is unchanging. Acceleration stays constant over time. So the function a of t, we'll just write that as a. And we'll also uh, write down some relationships that um, v of t is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the position function x of t. And that a of t is equal to the derivative with respect to time of v of t. So there's uh, you know, these, this relationship between these three quantities. So x of t is position versus time, v is velocity versus time, and a of t is acceleration versus time. So if we take this acceleration um, and we want to get to velocity from that, uh, oops, so we want to get to velocity from that, in order to undo this, um, this uh, differential, we do the integral of the uh, of the acceleration time expression with respect to time, and that's going to be equal to v of t. So here v of t is going to be equal to the integral of just a with respect to time, and if we integrate just a constant value, we'll find that v as a function of time is equal to a t plus c, some constant. Now since that, um, when, when time is zero, this whole term drops out, this constant is going to represent the velocity of this object at a time of zero. So we just write that as v naught, or v at any moment in time, is equal to the starting velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Now if we want the position as a function of time. Since we have this relationship that velocity is the derivative of the position function, then position is the integral of the velocity function. Okay, and so x of t then is going to be equal to the integral of v naught plus a t with respect to t. And so x of t then is going to be, let's see, this v naught is going to get a, a t with it. The a t, when we integrate that, that's going to be 1 half a t squared. And then we have some other constant that needs to be added to that. Now, when time is 0, this term and this term will drop out and we'll be left just with this constant. So that's going to be the position at a time of 0. So we'll label that constant x0. Or we can write this as x is equal to x0 plus v0 t 
plus one half a t squared. Okay, so that's two out of our three equations. The third one is just derived from these two by doing a substitution. So we can rewrite this one as v minus v naught over a is equal to t. Separate these out here. So those are two of our kinematics equations, or equations of motion. Um, and then I'm going to substitute this in to this equation. So I get x is equal to x naught plus v naught times v minus v naught over 2 plus 1 half a times v minus v naught over 2 uh, squared. So I've just plugged in the v minus v naught over a for my t root here. And then the rest is just algebra, uh, so solving, uh, rearranging this equation to make it, uh, make it pretty, make it easier to work with. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that x naught over to this other side, subtract that from both sides, is equal to, I'll subtract, or I'll uh, uh, go ahead and distribute that v naught. So this is v, v naught over 2 minus v naught squared over 2 plus the one-half a, and I'll leave that as it is for now, I'll just call that a over 2, times the uh, uh, the v minus v naught, that, that part squared, is going to be v squared minus 2 v v naught minus, uh, oops, plus v naught squared, and then the 2 squared part, that's going to be 4, so then x minus x naught is equal to v v naught over 2 minus v naught squared over 2 plus a over 2. And I guess we could um, uh, oh boy, where, where do we go wrong here? Something's not quite right here. A, oh, here we go. I miswrote it's not over 2, it's over A. There we go. Okay, so let's fix this and this and this and this and this and this. So that's over A, A. This is A squared now. A uh, minus V naught squared over A. A over 2, there we go. Um, times the, the V squared over, I didn't change anything here. Okay, so the a is going to cancel out with the a squared, looking just a on the bottom. So we'll have v squared minus 2v v naught plus v naught squared all over 2a. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2a just to simplify things a little bit. So 2a times x minus x naught. So 2a times this term will just give us 2 v v naught. 2a times this term is going to be just 2 v naught squared plus v squared minus 2 v v naught plus v naught squared. So I've got a plus 2 v v naught and a minus 2 v v naught. And uh, so now we'll, uh, uh, and then a, a minus 2 v naught squared and a positive 1 v naught squared. So we can write this as 2a x minus x naught is equal to, it's a positive v squared and a negative v naught squared. Or v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught equals v squared. And that's our third of the kinematics equations. So lots of really fun algebra and a little bit of uh, not too bad calculus to get to these three equations. Okay, so everybody should be back with us at this point. Um, let's just look at, uh, at some, uh, an example problem using these. Um, so let's say that we have, um, how about, 
a hockey puck that's sliding across the ice. And we'll say that it starts with a velocity of about 25 meters per second. It really is going pretty quick there. So starting velocity, that's V naught, is equal to 25 meters per second. And uh, we're, we'll say it's going to, uh, to slide to a stop. So that means our final velocity, or V at the end, is going to be zero. And then how about um, an acceleration given as, uh, we'll say, negative 0 0.5 um, meters per second squared. There's the unit for acceleration. Um, and then uh, uh, let's say our, um, uh, how about our distance here? V not V. Um, let's let's look for our distance. Um, change in x is equal to what? Um, or another way to write that. Let's say we we start at a position of zero. So what's our final position equal to? So we've got three equations that we can use to uh, um, to solve these problems. So we just need to pick out the right one. Now here I see that v. Um, or sorry, that, that T is not included in my list of what I know or what I'm solving for. So I'm looking at these three equations for one that doesn't involve T. And so that would be this third equation, V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A X minus X naught. Okay, so every time we do these problems, just look at the information that you have and that you're looking for and pick out an equation that has those same variables. I find it really useful to write this information out with the variables that go with that information. It makes it really easy to see. Okay, I've got a V naught here, V naught in this equation, V here, V here, A here, A here, X naught, X naught, X and X. There's no extra variables in this equation that I can't solve for. There's nothing in here that I'm not using or I, you know, I have um, the ability to get to my final answer. That makes this equation the right choice for us. So now we can just plug in and solve. So 0 is equal to 25 meters per second squared plus 2 times negative 0.5 meters plus uh, times x minus, whoops, x minus 0. Um, so then 0 is 625 meters squared per second squared. 2 times negative 0.5 is a negative um, 1 meter times x, whoops, that's meters per second squared, wrong units there, meters per second squared times x, so we get negative 625 meters squared per second squared is equal to negative 1 meter per second squared times x, so then x is equal to a positive 625 meters. So that hockey puck slides a really long distance before it comes to rest. Um, so any of these problems, you, know, you might have different equations that you have to use, but it's basically the, the same setup here. Do take the time to write out your given information like this. It really does make it easier to plug into these equations and to know which equation you need to use. Also watch the units. So we're going to want to work in standard metric units, that's meters and seconds for these things. So velocity should be meters per second, acceleration should be meters per second squared, time should be seconds, positions should be in meters on these. If you work in standard metric units, you never have to worry about um, uh, the units not working out correctly. You can work in other systems, you just have to be consistent, but it's easiest just to always work in the metric system, standard units like this.